Yeah, Rick and Holly, I got to tell you, the Buccaneers' high-powered offense looking like the walking wounded these days. I mean, there's so many starters out with injuries, including wide receivers Julio Jones and Chris Godwin, who did not practice for the second straight day. Natalia, I don't know about you. Personally, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. General Manager Julian Breeswall has wasted no time to secure the team's future. And for more on that future, come with me and take a quick little walk here. Talk to the man, the myth, the legend himself, <laughs> Mr. Mike Cairns. I didn't want to do the traditional, you know, sit down one on one interview. I want to have a little more fun and figured we could do a friendly game of horse. What do you think about that? Let's go. Don't hurt yourself. Oh, I won't hurt myself. Trust me. I still got it. Steph Curry range. <laughs> He made it. <laughs> well, no matter how many wins they pile up, the Rays continue to be the Roddy Dangerfield of Major League Baseball. They get no respect. Uh, he hasn't played since suffering a leg injury during Game 7 uh, against the Maple Leafs. That was more than a month ago. Well, good news for Bolts fans is that head coach John Cooper said this morning that Braden Point is good to go for tonight's Game 1. Credit to the Bucks. They finally scored a first quarter touchdown. First time they've done that this season. Only problem is... They didn't find the end zone again until late in the fourth quarter. Switching things up today. Going to do tonight's show from the desk. How about that? Look, so much room for activities. I, I feel so professional. Hold on. There we go. All right. Let's kick off the show with some baseball, shall we? Fun fact, 70% of the earth is covered by water. The rest is covered by this man, Randy Arosarena. What a snag. And then, of course, you know he's got to hit his signature pose there at the end. Rays off to a wonderful start in this one. Top of the third, Wander Franco. Adios, pelota. His second home run of the season, Rays lead 3-1. It's incredible what the Rays are doing right now. I mean, they're putting up stats that we haven't seen in the game of baseball since the late 1800s. Defensively, what went wrong for Tampa Bay? Because throughout the year, they were, I would say, at least solid. Maybe not 2020 great. But, man, Dak Prescott and that Cowboys offense just torched them. You heard Erickson kind of laugh about the red flag there. Interesting note on him. In all four of his IndyCar victories, there have been red flags. Uh, for whatever reason, the 32-year-old Swede just seems to thrive in chaos. And last one for you. I I've seen some clips of you on Twitter performing at halftime of a couple different big three events. Any chance we see you get on the mic here in Tampa this weekend? You never know. You know if that crowd is thick <laughs> enough. Now, he spoke with Arosa Arena earlier this morning, and of course he wants to improve on those numbers that he put up a year ago. But another thing in particular he talked about getting better at is decision-making. You know, he wants to get better on the base pass. He wants to improve his plate discipline. I think he would be proud of me. Ariana Mosley is following in her father's footsteps. So originally, I didn't really have an interest in playing basketball. I was doing, like, dance and gymnastics. And then I told my mom one summer I was tired of dance and I wanted to try something new because my dad had played basketball and I would always hear how good he was and things like that. Bradley Mosley was a starting guard for USF in the early 2000s. He finished second on the team in scoring his junior year and looked poised for a big senior season. Mosley drops one in. Until one morning, he noticed something was wrong. He was complaining that his side was hurting and the trainers also noticed that he wasn't able to, um, you know, finish the run that they had that morning. Bradley was diagnosed with renal medullary carcinoma, a rare and aggressive form of kidney cancer. Well, initially we were like, you know, we can beat it, even though the normal diagnosis was nine months. In the midst of chemotherapy, Bradley became a father. He actually had chemo that day. He actually got there three hours before she was actually born. So he actually made it, and it was beautiful. Like, he was crying, I was crying. Unfortunately, that joy would soon turn to heartache. Just eight months after Ariana was born, Bradley lost his battle with cancer. He was 22 years old. It was tough. It was really tough from being with each other for every day for the last two and a half, three years, to all of a sudden not having your best friend almost. It was, it was tough. Ariana never really got to know her dad, but not a day goes by where she doesn't think about him. Yeah, I've had it for forever. Same spot. Every, if the new house, same spot, by the door, close to the door. Just say hi sometimes, talk to him. He may not be here to witness it, but Emanuela knows Bradley would be beaming with pride over his daughter. Last year, Ariana made the girls' varsity basketball team at Tampa Prep as a freshman. And earlier this summer, she earned her first scholarship offer from Bethune-Cookman. He would be really proud of her from 
the classroom, to on the court, um, to every day in life. Ariana Mosley is carrying on her father's legacy while creating her own. But no matter where her journey takes her, she knows her dad is with her in spirit. I think he would keep pushing me to keep going and be there every step of the way.